Hey everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics and I have something to share with you some limitations and disadvantages in this particular circuit and later I'll show you ways to overcome it but in my particular circuit with the low voltages and the very low amount of potential difference between the different batteries I am very restricted and limited and I have an issue which I bet a lot of you could have already guessed by now. My light bulb is dimming, the current flowing through the system is still the exact same current but is way less, it's 50 milliamps less, it's half of what it was before. And the reason I bet some of you can guess, let's pause for a second and see if you guys can guess that while I turn on my meter. Now we have the batteries running the system are discharged to 7.45 volts. The batteries under charge have been charged to 3.5 volts. So now the potential difference, it was, these were 4 volts and these, well these were set at 8 volts in series and these were 3 volts, giving us a potential difference of 5 volts, which ran the LED lamp at full power. That was all beautiful and awesome. But now that we've had this set discharge, and this set has charged, that's pretty cool in itself. But the disadvantage now is the difference in voltage between the two sets has been reduced to 4 volts, causing the LED lamp to not be able to light up as brightly as before. There are ways to overcome this, which I am going to proceed with in the future. But I just wanted to share this one disadvantage and probably why this has not been done on a commercial basis. It's a really awesome project and really cool experiment and I'm going to carry on these experiments and show you some really incredible stuff that you can do with this. Also on a larger scale. But I want to share with you the problems and issues that will occur and why I think this has not been done commercially to this point. In my previous experiments, I took the primary set of batteries at 8 volts, ran it through what's called a boost inverter. What this does is it increases the voltage to a set voltage. You can adjust it with this dial. And I ran a 12 volt LED lamp. Now the advantage of doing it this way was that I stepped up to a much higher voltage from the original 8 volts through here to 12 volts. Well we all know that 12 volt powered devices have a much wider range of operation and so running a higher voltage device was a, to a much better advantage and I was able to run it for many many more hours and I'll get to that later on but I just wanted to show you a why this can be complicated uh, before I get to some solutions. For the first experiment I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and also show you the disadvantages. Now this has been running for six and a half hours already and I'm gonna shut it down for the night. I'm gonna have to carry on tomorrow because it's getting later in the day and uh, dinner comes. Life gets in the way of our projects but I will then pick this up tomorrow and add that other circuit I showed you so I can carry this on for much much longer so we can see some serious voltage differences and what happens when we swap batteries. Today I've removed the voltmeters. I'm simplifying things and I'm going to add a voltage booster because um, yesterday's project, the other day, was to provide the very simplest of circuits to show you a very, very simple transfer of energy from one battery through a load to another. Now, I have not changed the batteries. They were as they were last night. All I've done is taken out the two meters and I've adjusted a voltage booster that can go as low as 2.8 volts and produce 5 volts out, which is what I need to run this. Now what I was doing before is I was running this lamp directly off the voltage difference between 
8 volts and 3 volts, which was 5 volts. But as these come up in voltage, and these are reduced in voltage, uh, my LED was getting dimmer because the difference was shrinking. But with this little device, I can go as low as 2.8 volts, and I'll show you. I can change the voltage up as high as 5 volts on the power supply, which is my maximum that I will have with fresh batteries, fresh charged batteries on one side and fully dis discharged on another. Notice the output does not change at all, all the way to 5 volts, which is my maximum I will have. And then I can drop this power supply down, and 2.8 is the cutoff on this. So I can drop it all the way down, 3.0, 2.9, 2.8 and 2.7 boom we drop it it's the cutoff so 2.8 volts that's as low as I can go the voltage difference between these two batteries but now I can draw even more juice out of this and run this even longer because my ultimate goal is to discharge these pretty low charge these pretty high and then swap and continue running nothing else has changed so let me get this in there and fire it up. Okay, I've set up the circuit. All I've done is taken out the amp meters. I proved my point the other day. So I hope so. Some people are still skeptical. That's fine. This continuation of the experiment today will convince more, but not all. I'm not worried about that. So I've got nothing but the series battery here. Just to recap, I've got started out with 8 volts in series, uh, two 3.7 volt batteries. Here I started out with two in parallel and they were discharged at three volts. Um, yesterday I ran the circuit. If you missed that video, go back. I'll put the link below. Right now these are at 7.51 volts, the ones that are running the circuit. These here at 3.488. Oddly, this meter discharges the batteries. I really don't like it. It's a good precision meter, but it does discharge the batteries. They started at 3.491. Um, it is what it is. Anyway, once that settles down to a certain point, that's what we have. So now I've added what's called a boost controller or boost inverter in here. So instead of going from my battery straight to my LED lamp, which is 5 volts, as this voltage dropped and this voltage rose, I no longer, no longer had 5 volts in the system. 7.5 minus 3.4, if I do my numbers right, is 4 volts. The LED was running dimly. Now, I'm going to connect the ground back up, connecting the batteries together and turning on the circuit. And this little guy takes the 4 volts all the way down to 2.8 volts, runs it, and gives you a stable 5 volts out for the LED lamp to run on. Boom. There it is. Very bright. I'm going to make sure it's not too much. It looks bright. I can always get another voltmeter and check that. That is really bright. Now, these batteries are going to start charging. This is going to start discharging. It already dropped a lot once I connected the load because there was like a, what do you call it? It was at rest. It has a certain voltage at rest. Once you connect the load, that'll change. It'll drop. These are 3.578, 7.9. This shows thousandths of a volt. These are going to start charging. These are going to continue to discharge. The lamp will continue to light until the difference between these batteries and these batteries drops below 2.8 volts, at which point this will end. That will be the end of the cycle. And then I'll flip the batteries. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to add any more energy into the system. I'm just going to switch the batteries around and see if we can run further without any extra energy. So I'm going to let this run a while. It's going to take some time. We'll be back in a while. Meanwhile, over here, I'm experimenting with a load tester on a separate set of batteries. Again, same colors though. One's discharged, one's charged. And I'm experimentally going to see if I can use the load tester to find out exactly how much power I can pull out of the system and then keep cycling through. So this will be a really cool thing if I can get this to work. These are currently charging and going up. They started out at 3, see so they're going up. 
I don't have a meter on this one, but the difference in voltage between the two is 3.36 volts on here, and I'm pulling half an amp out of these batteries, and then this is now my load, so half an amp load, and this is precise, that's why I'm working with this one. And then these are now being charged and going up as we speak. So the idea here again, just a brief summary, is to see if I can get a very precise load test and a very precise calculation of how much power I can draw out of this. So meanwhile, this system has been going for, whew, I don't know, four or five more hours, uh, plus the, I don't know, four hours I ran it yesterday. So this has been going on quite a long time, and I'm going to run it until that quits. 6.92, and this one is at 3.69. So we still got a little bit to go before we're down to the 2.8 volts where that cuts out, that little device cuts out, and the light will go off. This one is going to be very clear when it's done. The light's going to go out, and then I'll know that uh, it's time to swap these batteries. Well guys, I'm gonna have to call it a day. 6.79 over here. We have 3.69, about 3.7 over here. I don't know why this bet this does draw off the batteries. 3.7 here, 6.79 here. I'm gonna shut it down for the night and leave it at that. Tomorrow, I'll swap. So, all I have to do to shut it down is disconnect the common ground, and that's it for the night.